Hello everyone, my name is Tyler Sikelski from Lonely Spec and today I got something really exciting for you. I'm going to show you how to remove coma and sharpen stars in your astrophotography images using Photoshop. Let's get started. Alright guys, we're going to get right into it here. So I have an image pulled up that I took earlier this year in Sedona, Arizona. Uh, testing out the Tokina 16-28 f2.8 lens. Now I was using my Canon 6D for this and I was shooting wide open at 2.8 at 16 millimeter. And as you can see, um, especially in the corners of this image, we have some pretty nasty chromatic aberration and coma. Now, Ian has a great article on this topic on thelonelyspec.com. Uh, be sure to check that out if you have any questions. And what we're going to be doing today is making a custom brush and using the clone stamp tool and we are going to remove that coma, uh, make the stars smaller, appearing sharper to the eye. And it's also going to help bring out the nebulosity in the Milky Way and some details that we're going to really like at the end result. Now I will note that this is a pre-processing method. Uh, you want to do this with your near raw images and uh, post process after you actually get this done. Now that being said, you can actually go back and uh, correct some of images that you've already processed and totally change the look. So what we're going to do first, uh, we're going to go to File, New, and we are going to create a new file, 500 pixels by 500 pixels is fine. And this is where we're going to be making our brush preset. So we're going to go down to the Ellipse tool and making sure we have the black selected. We are going to go to the center of the image here and we are going to grow the radius from the middle and how you do that you hold shift and as the radius starts growing you're going to click alt and so then it'll grow from the center and we're going to leave some room around the edges um, because what we're going to do is create a blur on this layer and it's going to ask us here if we want to rasterize or make it a sharp object uh, we're just going to convert to smart object okay so Around 10 uh, radius seems to work pretty well. Um, I think for this one, we're going to go a little bit further, around 15 pixels. It's a little bit softer. It's going to blend with that background more, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here in just a minute. We're going to make a new layer. We're going to change our color foreground to white, and we're going to do the exact same thing, grow a shape from the center by holding shift and then click alt and we're gonna make this one about one-third the size so it looks dead in the center you want it as close to the center as possible and what we're gonna do is merge these layers and define our brush preset by going to edit define brush preset and you can name this whatever you want uh, we're just gonna call this the coma corrector Click OK. And once you define the brush preset, uh, you'll be able to find it over here in your properties uh, under the brush. And you can scroll all the way down, and that, there it's going to be right there. So you go back to your image. Go ahead and hide this. And we are going to duplicate the layer. You can also do that by doing Control J. And we are going to start using the clone stamp tool let me delete these to um, removing that comb around the stars so we're going to zoom all the way in to 100% uh, we're going to go up to the corners here just so I can show you an example uh, before I uh, run the two times speed as I'm flying through this we're going to go to the clone stamp tool here and we're going to go to our brush and as you can see it's going to be pretty big because we uh, did the 500 pixels uh, but I found to make the brush size between 30 and 40 pixels is going to be your best. So we'll start with 40. Um, and we're going to go around these stars here. And you're going to select a region close to the star by holding Alt and clicking. And then dragging over the star. And as you can see, where we made that 
white in the middle there is going to reveal what it's going to show. So we want to get the bulk of the star um, in the center of the star as much as possible. We're just going to go through here and just click and it can keep sampling from the same area away from the star as long as you're not going to run into too many other stars and you can just keep that rolling and as soon as it you start overlapping on a star you can just select a new area to draw from all right so that's pretty much it guys um, with the bigger stars you can make the brush larger by doing the bracket up and make it smaller by doing the bracket down and I will note that along the horizon uh, you typically want to make the stars a little bit smaller so typically around at, at the very most 30 and that's because along the horizon the stars are usually softer and smaller so then we're just going to go through that and after I run through all these stars I'm going to show you a, a trick to blending them even better and we're going to go from there Alright guys, so as you can see, you can be conservative or you can be as liberal as you want with this. You can spend hours, you know, getting every little detail in the stars, making um, your image super duper sharp, um, or you can just correct the, the really nasty looking stars. Um, I, I did about 50-50, it only took me about 15 minutes, but as you can see, the image is drastically sharper to the eye. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn the this background layer off or this layer off so you can see what we were working with and turn it back on. And as you can see, it is a dramatic difference, but it's so simple. And I'm going to show you if you have uh, let me find in Terry's here some blending issues, especially when there's super bright stars. Let's zoom right in here. So this is Antares, and as you can see here, when I was using the coma corrector, um, it was a little too dark around that area just because of the nebulosity around there. It's a little bit bright. So what you can do, uh, double click on the layer so we can bring up the layer style options, and we're gonna use a blend if. Now by holding alt, you can adjust uh, how much of that dark color we want to let in there. And as you can see, starting to blend just a little bit better so this is what it was before and after and now it's bringing back some of the coma on the other stars so I'm actually gonna be a little less liberal with that option and maybe blend in some of the background layer Yeah, so um, in situations like that, you could always just create a mask and uh, use a brush. And we're going to go with black and just make a standard small brush here. And we'll bring the opacity down about 10%. And we're just going to draw around this star to lighten that up just a little bit. Let's blend that in with the nebula. But other than those um, tricky situations, 99% of them are going to blend perfectly well. Alright, so it's just that simple. I really hope you enjoyed the video. And I hope you can revisit some of your old images and maybe bring some new life into them. Uh, please follow LonelySpec.com for all your gear reviews and tutorials. And I'll see you next time. See ya.